The following presentation is a production of Ride the Wave Media. Hello, welcome back to Practically Magic. This is Courtney Pearl. Today I am your healer. And with me today I have another healer. And that is Kaylin Gardner, who is a uh, healer, breathwork, Reiki master, um, owns Pure Spirit Healing. And today we're here to talk about light language and channeling. Welcome. Hi, Courtney. Thank you so much for having me. And if you are watching on YouTube, you get to see the beautiful room behind him and his healing space, which is so beautiful. I was there not too long ago. So peaceful. Thanks. So we got together last night. I had my uh, free meditation and sound bath with um, Kaya Community with Cambria Davis. And I was so happy to see you come. Yeah, I think it was beautiful. Beautiful night. Worried about rain for a little bit, but it worked out perfect, didn't it? So. Yay. It rained this morning, so I was really happy. I was like, okay, we missed the rain for our event. That's great. But it was so awesome to do it outdoors, really, under the cloud cover and you. beautiful evening it was. And I've been to your sound bath, so I, I was just so thrilled to be able to, in some way, offer that back to you. Like, <laughs> doing it for each other, giving each other that healing space we both need, right? Yeah, and it's such, it's not very often that as sound facilitators that we don't get to experience it. So yeah, ditto back to you. It was great to experience that too in return. We received that, so. It's so powerful. I I hope someday it will do kind of a focus episode just on sound healing. So stay tuned for that. Um, I do drumming during my Reiki and, uh, you know, sessions with people. I don't do sound healing, but I'm not a you know, certified sound healer or anything like that. But I just love the sounds. And someday I'll know I really made it when I get my own set of bowls. <laughs> I have my eye on some. I've had my eye on some for a while. And I'm like, I just want them to play with just for me, just for my family. It would be amazing. So anyway, we'll do another episode about that. We'll, we'll move on to what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to Pick a card, and I was showing him our um, Lunar Oracle deck that I just got. Um, I was at Peach Days in Brigham City, and they have a little shop called the Three Goats Gruff, where I got bought my first tarot deck. Um, let me tell you, growing up in Brigham City, I never in my life would have thought I would buy a tarot deck or an Oracle deck <laughs> in Brigham City, Utah. So... It's a shout out to my hometown for progressing and becoming so open-minded. <laughs> Did you at least buy some peaches when you were up there? Of course. Of course. <laughs> you have to buy peaches. From the fruit stands or from peach days, you got to get the peaches. Get some peach cobbler. Mm. We go every year. We can't help ourselves. We have to go. So I am going to, and this is really interesting because today is the full moon. Full moon in Pisces. We had our meditation sound bath. When people are listening to this episode, it won't be. It'll be two weeks later. And so we learned a lot last night about like the energies that are going on right now with this full moon. Have you felt any of that? Have you felt like things have been a little emotional? Maybe? Yeah, it's interesting because I did my light language transmission for the month of September. And a lot of what you guys were talking about last night was re- restated so yeah very very much so lots of ups and downs and riding the wave well i keep telling myself that i'm not going to go into astrology and that i'm not going to dive too far into it because it's a whole other thing that i would have to dedicate study to and the more i'm moving through this life the more i'm like i can't get away from it when she said, have things been like chaotic the last couple of days? I was like, oh my gosh, no wonder. If I'd known what the stars were doing, if I knew, if I'd known what the planets were doing, I would have, I would have been like, oh, of course, this mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. So what's interesting is I pulled the full moon card for today's episode. It's, 
showing it on camera, but it's not much to look at. The artwork is very simple. It's just circles and shapes. Um, but it's funny that this, there's a lot of full moon cards in the stack, different ones. It was really interesting. I'm pulling this card and the affirmation on it is problems provide opportunities to grow and learn. Mm, perfect. So, if any of you have been experiencing problems at this last full moon that we've had, um, so by the time you're listening to this, it will be after. Um, but we're between part the eclipse season. So this is like opening eclipse season and then there's supposed to be um, you know, an eclipse that closes that time period, which for some people, it can be very much like opening a portal or it can be very much like um, powerful energies or a lot of, uh, I've heard people say it's um, kind of um, advanced healing, right? All the healing you can get done in a certain amount of time, this is like super speed or it will happen a lot at once kind of a thing. For sure. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it was interesting. So do you want to share your picture from last night? Um, sure. While we're getting into the topic of light language. Yeah. So this is what came through. Yeah. And for those who are just listening to audio, I'm afraid you're going to have to go to the YouTube channel to see this. So you can see what he drew and channeled from last night. You can see like the portal. The doorway. Yes, yeah, so I'll just I'll just mention um, when you guys guided me into meditation. This came through, and as you said, that we were standing along the banks of the lake. I literally saw a door with an actual handle, and I opened the door. And the symbol that came through was the pyramid, which comes through a lot for me. And it, after kind of um, integrating it last night, it kind of came through as just what we're all this journey we're on and opening the door and allowing whatever takes place just to let it happen and flow naturally and just opening the door and walking through on your path. So that's what it symbolized for me. Yeah. And I can see that connected to some of the things we talked about, about the, the things happening and the energy. So I don't know if I'll mention this yet. Okay. I'll say it. I went to, so I did a light language session with you a couple of weeks ago, and I'm going to show one of the things that came from that. And so again, those of you listening to audio, you're going to see what was drawn, what was channeled for my session. Um, so you'll have to go to the video to see that. But what's interesting about this to me is this figure at the top, it kind of reminded me instantly of a key which had, again, we talked a little bit about synchronicities uh, mm -hmm. in that session, and that was something that keys have been coming up in. And I love keys. I do have, like, the image of keys and, like, the little trinkets and, um, yeah, key trinkets that I like to charms and things that I like to put on things. But it's not something that's, like, su ever been super in the forefront until just before this session and after. So, like, I went um, to a store a day or two later. I'm trying to think of exactly when, but I went into a store and a woman had a necklace with a key on it. <laughs> but not like a little, not like understated, just a little charm. No, this was like this big. It took up her whole chest. It was a giant rhinestone infested, like, key old timey lock shaped type of key and it was beautiful and i was like i love your necklace but i was like this was like hey pay attention to me i don't walk by without saying something or like notice yeah. right so synchronicities were happening all over the place and i also bought a key like that um i think right before our session, it was about this big. I bought it in a little witchy shop, Crohn's Hollow in Salt Lake. Um, mm -hmm. There was kind of Hecatean um, trinkets and things like that, charms. And so I love keys and I love Hecatean things. So I was like, I'm going to get this for my staff. And so I put it on copper wire and I wrapped it into my staff that I have. 
So that all happened like right around the same three days as the sessions. So when that image came up, I was like, I don't know what this means, but this is something I'm opening doors. I'm, mm -hmm. you I'm know, locking. getting the keys I need. Right. So tell me a little bit about your journey in coming into doing light language, but also just your experience with channeling, what that means to you. Yeah. So light language in particular is somewhat new. This only started happen to, happening to me about two and a half years ago. And it was after a healing session I did um, with Meg Hansen. And I went into that session with um, the intention of healing some past traumas and kind of doing some shadow work with her. And that was my intention going into it, but that's not what came through. During session, I started speaking in a different language. I didn't know what it was. And um, yeah, and I was kind of like, Meg was kind of surprised too, because she'd never experienced that either. So interesting. Anyway, Pat, since then, I've kind of just been doing some homework. And recently, just this past um, August, I graduated light language school with um, Jamie Price. If you guys aren't familiar with Jamie Price, I would recommend looking for her YouTube channel. She's amazing. She channels Arion, who is um, a galactic. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a beautiful journey. I am blessed to be a part of it. And it's been interesting because as a child, I've also gotten direct, I've always integrated channeling into my healing work as well, because I feel like you know, the healing that we all receive to offer to everybody comes through our spirit guides and our angels and ancestors and all that stuff too. So it's just kind of worked out perfect as far as what light language is. So Yeah. Yeah. I I think it's interesting my relationship with channeling and like how that feels. When I was probably first beginning to learn about this whole world <laughs> of what I still just mockingly refer to as the woo woo world mm -hmm. because it's not, it's just life, but okay. So what other people might consider to be woo woo world and like the mystical and spiritual aspect of life is that, um, I remember thinking to myself, I don't think I have any of these gifts. I don't think, I mean, when I hear people talk about, you know, spiritual mediums or something might talk about like, well, I've always had this gift since childhood. I could see things and know things and blah, 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 blah. And I just was like, oh, that's amazing. How amazing is that to be able to do that? I don't have that. I don't think there's, you know, I want to, but I don't. And then when people talk about spirit guides, I would be like, desperately like, oh, I want to meet my spirit guides. I want to know who they are. I want to, you know, and I would do these, um, Portions or these things where I would be like, this is supposed to help me meet my spirit guides. And so I'd be like, ready. And I would go through these meditations and I would be like, hello, where are you? <laughs> and I just, I just wanted it. And I, I wasn't experiencing it the way I guess I thought it was supposed to be. <laughs> and so I felt not discouraged, but just kind of like, well, maybe this just isn't, I'm just not born to do it. Or maybe it's just not me until, I don't know. I don't know what shifted. I can't think of a moment when something was like, oh. But something about, in, um, I don't know, developing intuition more and more, mm -hmm. I started to be like, oh my gosh, that's what it is? It's not like... I don't know, like spirit guide Bob is showing up to me and being like, hey, I'm Bob. I'm your spirit guide. So we're going to work together. It, it, it never happened to me like that. Like some people do have that experience, but I, I realized that what I was having when I realized there were certain things that weren't coming from me, feelings, thoughts, impressions and even creativity like visual creativity like in the way that you do the drawing or the visual representation of a channel that I was like 
Oh, I didn't realize that's what that was all along. But I would also say, Courtney, I think that you do do a form of white language. What I know about you and your, your artistic classes, I honestly feel that that is a form of light language. So. Yeah, I can see that. And that's why the very first time, and I don't know if I saw it the very first time you posted it, but something that you posted when you posted a visual, when you posted the drawing, um, it might have been that one that you said you did for hours. And oh, mm -hmm. like there was something about that that just absolutely drew me right in. And I don't know if you could tell in my comments, but I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Stop. Hold on. What is this? I need to know what you're talking about. And I had not heard of light language before. I had not heard of that whole other thing, this whole other thing that opened up to me. <laughs> yeah. When I first did that, I had no idea what I was doing either. But I literally sat for an hour and a half and draw, you know, I was drawing these, all these symbols that were coming to me and being downloaded. So I think I've got it here. Yeah. yeah so this is the okay. first light language. Guys, if you're not watching this on YouTube, please go see this. This blows my mind because to me, this deserves to be in like an art gallery. People need to see that. And I know they will look at it and they will have feelings. They will have downloads. That's how I feel when I see it. I'm like, I don't know what it is, but there's information just coming from that image. And yeah, that's totally what it was. That's totally what it was for me. It was, it's literally after taking my course in class and graduating, I've had some time to go back and kind of look at it again. And for me, it is really my ancestral path, just not for me, but it's literally a map of yeah. like my lineage and whether it be from my dad's side, which is Native American or my mother's side, which is Viking and Norse. So it's just very pretty. Yeah, if you guys get a chance, you should look at it because it can bring up different emotions and feelings for everybody that looks at it. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, wait. And yeah, you're right. I mean, some of the, the what I'm hoping through healing through art classes and workshops and even my classes with kids is to unblock that creative flow. Mm -hmm. And a lot of artists will, will agree. Um, you know, you've heard writers and poets and artists talk about that feeling of flow. Mm -hmm. um, they talk about it in the artist way, which I use a lot in my art classes and with kids is that um, Julie Cameron talks about, getting into the flow and letting creative flow go through you, you have to um, kind of figure out how to silence that inner critic or there's a part of you that has the doubt or the judgment on what you're doing or making. And there has to be a way for you to at least set it aside and say, thank you. I understand you're here to keep me safe, but I need you to step aside so I can let this flow happen. And I yeah. think some of that was my doubt in being able to engage with the spiritual and to being able to be like, I need to trust what's coming through, that it's mm -hmm. real, that it is coming through me for a reason. It's coming to me. It's, yeah, but I can trust it and not be like, oh, that's just my imagination, right? <laughs> letting, letting go of ego. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, which is very hard for me. Uh, as as we talked about last night, I'm a Leo moon sign and there's a lot of ego there. So Constant I think that's just part of the human experience for all of us too. So, Yeah, that part that doubts and judges or says even, I want this to be special. I want to have some specialness about this. And um, yeah, so it's kind of a constant, like I, I want to be in service with whatever work that I do, service to source, service to self, and service to others. And um, and I can't let that judgment or doubt get into the way. Um, yeah. To be allowing that to go forward. Um, I, I will say, too, that some of the, like, mediumship classes that I've taken, out of pure interest in what that would look like, um, not because I 
I thought, oh, I'm a medium. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to become a medium. I'm going to whatever. But I was like, oh, mediumship classes might help me to tap into that. And it surely did. I mean, it was very powerful to be able to say the thoughts and feelings and images that are coming to my mind are something else. They're not mm -hmm. just me thinking them up. They're not my subconscious. They are, um, there's something else, right? Download. 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 Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I do want to say in the session that I had with you, I'll share this, um, that what felt to me like it wasn't coming from me, I have no way my mind would come up with this. Like I've never like imagined this before, but I had an image while I was sitting there. And while you were doing your chanting and you were doing your part, I tried to just soften my gaze. I tried to just, yeah, just be receptive to whatever thoughts and feelings were coming in to me, what I was feeling. And I had this distinct image of being in kind of, well, now I would probably call it a roundhouse. <laughs> like the Celtic people I was Perfect. talking about earlier. The Celtic people had these roundhouses with the hearse fire in the middle. Um, at the time, I didn't, I didn't make that connection. I was thinking of it as some kind of uh, ancient times meeting house kind of a feel. Um, maybe Na Native American teepee sort of feel about it. It was dark. There was a fire in the middle. And I remember just being there surrounded by um, elders. They just felt like mm -hmm. uh, the elders of the community, the ones that would hold the wisdom, the ones that kind of guide. And I don't know, they were all there kind of surrounding me. But there was one in particular, an older man who had like a finger up. And he was waving his finger at me and he was speaking in a language I didn't understand. I, I remember that. I remember it was like the language you were speaking. That's, I, you know, didn't know what the language was, but I do know that he was kind of admonishing me. Is that the word? Reprimanding. Reprimanding. Yeah. <laughs> he was sort of waving in his finger at me and not in a in a shameful way because I didn't feel any shame. I right. didn't feel shamed. I didn't feel guilty. But it was just sort of like, you know what you're supposed to be doing. You know, and you're not doing it. And you better get it together. Because <laughs> you're not in balance with the things of the spiritual world and the things of the physical world. And all the time I have been spending lately on, you know, even this podcast, just like, working on you know my social media my marketing you know this and that and whatever and um bookkeeping um i don't know what is all the things that we do and like we don't like to do it i don't know about you but i'm not of that world it's hard for me to do that stuff no i think we talked about during your session too how and this is a big thing for september too how we're all kind of feeling disconnected from the old reality as we're getting these upgrades and everything. So yeah, it makes total sense. But I love, I love that you had that connection because that's what light language, that's been my experience is it's almost activating and helping us to remember of where we came from, maybe almost experiencing past lives that we've been through. That's what light language is. It's, you know, receiving those ancient codes and downloads from our ancestors, our spirit guides, angels, whatever that is just helping us to remember who we are and our sole purpose so yes it's amazing and for me just it's been quite a journey just getting to the point where i can go let me just start paying attention to that and really mm -hmm. giving it the credit like because i mean what harm is it really i think about people who are like that's not real like, that's not logical. Of course, you know, oh, you know, that's just your imagination or whatever. And it's like, why does it matter if it was? If I feel that this is guiding my life, it's it helping me understand something that I need to understand. Um, I really don't see the difference or the or the 
why it matters if it's just imagination. And I've had people too that, you know, Reiki masters is are like, well, what do you think imagination is? Right, exactly. And that was powerful to me because thinking back to me as a child, here's me, Pisces sun sign. Okay. As a child, all of my best friends were imaginary. All of my best friends were trees. <laughs> mm -hmm. When I was lonely and I didn't have anyone to play with, I would climb trees and I would talk to the trees and I would be like, well, you're my friend because no one else will play with me today. So I guess I just have to imagine that the tree is my friend and we'll just talk to each other. And, um, and I used to think if I really wanted it bad enough, if I tried hard enough, I could get my cat to talk to me. <laughs> but learn to talk and she would just talk to me. She would... And she, and she did. probably was. She did. Absolutely. <laughs> now that I look back on it, I mean, I was a little bit frustrated as a child that it didn't look like the movies and she wasn't talking to me. But I think back on it now and I think I knew exactly what my cat was saying. I knew mm. she was telling me, buzz off. I'm trying to sleep. Why are you standing here with flashcards in my face? <laughs> I know that what she was saying. I could hear it. And I was like, just try. Just try to say something. Well, anyway, yeah, so. Yeah, that's all. We were, you were probably considered a weird kid too back then, right? All of us were probably. All of us light workers were considered a little weird, but that's okay. The best. Then all that, then all that programming kicks in and we forget those beautiful gifts that we have and we have to learn to remember them into adulthood, so. Absolutely. And that's what I, I guess that's what my journey mm. for the last few years has been. It's that remembering that going back to uh, what what was really the priority. And that's what I have to keep shifting back into because my responsible, I don't know, um, maybe it's a Libra sign in me that wants to like get to business, get some stuff done, check things off the to-do list and stick to a schedule. And, and then I get admonished, I get, finger wag with it's like that's not where the real work is the real work is when you take the time out to go and meditate and connect mm -hmm. and when you take the time to take that walk and connect and all the ways that work for me and paint right? right so oh that's another thing i was going to mention is when you talk about the artwork um in the Celtic folklore, we, we call it the Anwen. Um, it's the potion of creative flow of the universe that it's the wisdom and prophecy potion that's created in the cauldron of Caridwen. And she brews Anwen. And so when we talk about Anwen, we talk about like, oh, hey, Anwen has not started yet today. I haven't had my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw somebody joke about that on one of our retreats. It was so cute. But she's like, when you tap into that creative flow, you set that judgment aside and that on when is flowing, you have that creative force of energy that's flowing through you and you can create without worrying about what does it look like? Is it right or wrong? And I just did, I just did a healing through art session on Saturday with a group of um, therapists that had invited me to come and do a private event for mm -hmm. them. And it was wonderful because two of them were like, what if I hate this? What if I just hate it and I don't want to paint? And I was like, so great that you have got that awareness. Like you are hearing that part of yourself. Yeah. That's like, I don't. And one of them was like, I just want to control the painting so much. I want it to look a certain way. And I, I'm so frustrated because I'm painting and it's not looking like I, and I said, that's so great. Now, what are you going to do to honor the child self that wants to let go of that control? What I love do to help say to them, you know, that past self, that past part of yourself that's like, was told you're not doing it right. It has to look a certain way to be good. Mm. And how can you break free from that and let that go? And then maybe just toss the brush and use your hands. Just get something out that feels good to you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. 
We're all artists. I will say it until the day I die. Every single one of us is an artist. It's just about unblocking that part of you. Yeah, and I, I really, I really believe that art, artists, art, artists, really, it's a form of channeling because you're, you talked about, you know, letting the flow come through and what spills out on the paper, or canvas, or whatever. It's all a form of channeling, right? So, I fully believe that. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully, if anyone's listening that has that doubt, like I did. And felt and feels like, oh, but it's not really real or like it's just or whatever, but just not, you know, try it. Try not doubting yourself and see what happens because <laughs> amazing magical things happen when you stop doubting yourself and you just trust it and you go with it. I, I will, I'll just say that there is a lot that I, it unlocks. <laughs> I, I call, I call, I call, we all have a neighbor that lives next door. And I always say, you know, just tell your neighbor you love them and appreciate them, but just allow them to go back a little bit and bring yourself forward and just let your neighbor go for a little bit and express yourself. Yeah. So. I feel like mine's the nosy neighbor with uh, binoculars, <laughs> like keeping an eye on every single thing I do. And is like, oh, that's not okay. We're not yeah. pulling your wings. You're not doing that, you know? And I'm like, oh, Girl, <laughs> step off a little bit. Give me some space. Awesome. So we were going to maybe do a demonstration. Um, you wanted to show us kind of what the channeling looks, feels, sounds like. So what would you like to do for that? Yeah, so we can do... Let me fill into it for just a moment. What if we do a general channel? I'll bring through, let's focus on, since we're in full moon right now, we can do one for abundance in all of its beautiful forms. Um, renewal and prosperity. Let's bring that through. Okay, so what I will... Um, do light language is just me tapping into my higher self and communicating with my my ancestors my spirit guides my angels the galactics and um we'll just see what comes through so i'll just ask everybody for just a moment to tune in close your eyes take a few deep relaxing breaths And just be present in this moment. I only allow what is for my highest good. I am an open channel for light language transmission through my higher self. I am bringing through a light language transmission for abundance, renewal, and prosperity. Krunara is frumar kram eratan, trut iravan ur kramar shurnat in. Burana is runner his air and the ear can woman and the east shan run her eden prat. Brunara achrishiner and Udiraras in Durkran idler at the cannibal and addition on a clean idiot than irreder of Kurler amen ear to the Nay root in it, clean at that irishin woman and a cram arat in unidicting them. Isha Ama. Hita blut an i kram it dan a. Boomer an ara thrush irana prona kram irit ke frun er krim hita. Shupenisi nero krun.
Runarak, Emiran, Ush, Gran Bron, Erite, Krem, Ina, Drun, Erite, Nis, Shen, Brana, E, Krem, Hat, Ilud, Het, Run, Etch. Methanana, E, Runar, His, Namara. Meredana, Ita. Meaning of any shame you are not either of that. Women are out of this. Nerek hard. I nerek is. Prene e tara e. Meratan akran. Runere kreita marana vit. Runehech id frana brugan er king veran den shambol method. Okay, good. I'll just ask that you tune in to what you're experiencing emotionally, physically, mentally, and psychically for just a moment. Any downloads that you receive, feelings, just become aware of those. Maybe a slight understanding, remembrance. Rubbing hands together, just becoming present in the moment again. And joining us back in space with Courtney. Opening your eyes when you're ready. There you go. Well, I can tell you what I saw and the people listening at home, I would encourage you to write down anything that you saw or downloaded and not let what I say be influenced in any way by that. But I saw immediately a big bowl. Like, it looked like the size of a room. Huge bowl. And it was just getting filled with things. Um, like food and water, but then money filling the bowl. Abundance. But it was also heavy. And I could feel it almost like on the top of my head. Like it was mm -hmm. weighing me down, kind of like feeling heavy. And then I saw it switched to um, the movie Stargate. <laughs> Maybe it was the way the language sounded. I'm not sure, but it was the movie Stargate. And you know how um, it was like a planet of like desolation, like nothing, like sand. It felt like, and yet there was these people living there and they were freeing themselves from slavery. But it was like, look, the message I felt with that was look at these people living where there is seemingly nothing to survive on hmm. and they are they are going to thrive being free and being a community together like they have each other and they they have they can be happy they can be happy and healthy and well even in this complete desert of a environment like the movie dune i guess you know, they make it work. But I, I was like, then it came back to the bowl and I realized the bowl was not being filled up for me. It was being filled up by a whole bunch of people. Lots of people, right? Yeah. And then it wasn't heavy anymore. 
And the message I kept getting with that was it's abundance and prosperity doesn't look like you get rich. <laughs> abundance looks totally different to different people, right? That's perfect. Yeah, it means you're going to be taken care of. You're going to mm. be okay, but it's going to be because of the collective, everyone understanding their part in taking care of the collective, the people. I love that. That's perfect. I experienced not a bowl per se, but I did experience that same accumulation of what it, what you were describing. And I de definitely felt some crown chakra activation. And what, whenever we experience something coming through our crown chakra, that's obviously coming through from the source and creator. So that makes all perfect sense. And for me, that, that's where renewal comes in because we're getting these downloads and kind of a different vision of what abundance looks like because it has so many different forms. So, Well, I don't know if any of that highlights uh, uh, my political beliefs in any way, <laughs> shape, or form, but <laughs> I think we just, you know, I think it doesn't really matter politically which way I lean but that feels like you know the the message that I was getting like mm -hmm. we have to take care of each other and that's going to be where the abundance really happens um at least for me in my life like it's going to be not just getting rich or getting you know having all of the things I need coming to me beautiful I love that uh, that was amazing and I hope those of you listening at home we're able to experience something from that and hear or feel or download something that is significant to you. And if you did, I would love to hear about it. So me if too. anyone wants to um, get in contact with us, please message me and say, when I was listening to that, this is what I had experienced. Or maybe you have questions about it you'd like to ask us because that would be cool too. I would be happy to answer questions or direct questions you and so tell them how they can find you if they want to do a session with you or yeah so um i just started a new facebook page that i would love everyone to follow um it's oh and it's just what i'm going to be doing on there is just updating my journey with this beautiful thing of light language and also month monthly transmissions for people and whatever comes through will be perfect for us as a collective in that moment um, so yeah, follow me on Facebook, which is Awakening the Language of Light. And then it's also on Instagram, as you know, all the under underscores. It's Awakening underscore language underscore of underscore light. So yeah. Perfect. Just follow me for all that. And yeah, it's been a beautiful journey. Okay. And then I will put all of that for people on my blog that I partner with this episode. So in kind of a summary of what we talked about today and um, and all the resources, including Jamie Price on YouTube, you know, things that we've talked about will be on my blog. And you can get that at prism-healing.com. At the top, it has all of my tabs for services and you'll see blog up there. And so all my blog um, posts for all of these episodes are there on my website. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram at prism underscore healing or TikTok at prism healing um, and Facebook Courtney Pearls prism healing. That's prism P R I S M. I'm just going to throw that out there again because I get a lot of like prison healing. I'm like, <laughs> no, I love prison prison people. I will offer healing to you too, but I'm not a prison healer. I am prism, as in colors, healing. And um, and yeah, on our uh, perspective websites and social media, you can also find what events we have coming up. Um, for me, the next thing is going to be uh, this episode coming out the beginning of October. Um, I am starting my Healing Through Art monthly full moon course will be this month in October. So if you... If the spots haven't been filled already, there's only six spots. So go to my website and you can see that course will be starting this month. Any other events you know of that are coming up for you? Um, 
Nothing in the nothing right now. I am working on getting um, a space set up downtown Salt Lake to do some weekly sound baths. Um, so that's in the works. But yeah, just okay. I do private private sessions at my house and stuff like that. So. Okay, so make sure you follow him so you can get that info when it comes out. Yeah, you know all of the exciting new things and the sound baths when those happen. I always want to go. I wish I could go to every single one. I'm always like, oh. <laughs> that one, I have the, you know, this or that or whatever. But I'm always, like, making a point to make it to a sound bath once in a while because that's really powerful stuff to be in the center of vibrational frequencies just being showered upon you. A lot of people have come through it with incredible downloads, talk about channeling, and mm -hmm. incredible awarenesses that are nothing more than just their own experience of going through the sound bath. So I highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't had or experienced a sound bath before. It's, it's another great modality of healing. Yep, for sure. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I've had such a great time and it's been just an awesome episode. So we'll see you next time, witches and wizards. Thank you.